Hello Model Railroaders, my name is Andy Dorsch and welcome to my Model Works. Today I'll be showing you how to patch out and weather this boxcar without using an airbrush. The model that we'll be modifying today is a KDHO scale 50 foot boxcar. The materials I'll be using are some Bragdon weathering powders, Tamiya spray paints, Vallejo washes, and craft store acrylics. Step one will be masking the model. What we want to do is create the area of the patch outs. So I'm taking my Tamiya masking tape here. This is six millimeter stuff. And I'm taking my time to get the line perfectly straight on the top of the box for the patch out. I don't want to have it crooked. This is a tedious process, but in the long run, it is worth it. Again here, another adjustment that we're gonna do here, and it's, oh my gosh, it's pretty crooked there on the bottom. So this is gonna take me about a half hour to get this straight. So we'll just go ahead and speed this up. It's a funky beat. So once we've got it all masked up, it's time to do the patch out. So we got some Tamiya spray paint here, TS2 dark green. And we'll do a couple of test sprays and then we're going to spray right across the model just like you're using an airbrush. So start spraying when you're off the model, bring it across and then don't stop spraying until you pass the model. You want to keep the can about six to eight inches away from the model. And we're going to accelerate this process. So I'm going to bring in the wife's old hair dryer here and use my handy model holder. That's right, that is a toilet paper tube. And we'll just speed the process up here. All right, it's time for the big reveal. So we're gonna take the tape off here and should just peel away pretty easily. Um, yeah, this is taking a little bit longer than I had hoped, so we'll just go ahead and speed things up here and we'll have the big reveal of the patch out. And there you have it, nice clean patch outlines there. And now it's time to paint the roof. So using Tamiya spray paint here, gloss aluminum, TS-17. Same technique applies as we did with the patch out. We'll do a couple of test sprays here off the model. All right, and then we'll just go across and back. So I never stop spraying while I'm in the middle of the model. And then I also keep about six to eight inches away from the model. So we'll put this on fast forward here. We'll accelerate the process. We have a nice looking galvanized roof. I didn't record any video of me putting on decals, but I can tell you that it was quite a fun process. As you can see, the numbers and letters are quite small and it was difficult to get them together. So that's right, sports fans. We're bringing back the mascot of Valley Railroad. This patch out is my first car in my home road. And now that we got the decals on it, we are going to weather this. We're gonna start with a fade. And I'm using the Vallejo weathering set for green vehicles 
and we're just doing a green wash over the top of this model. So what we want to do is just kind of set the tone. This Burlington Northern Green is a little bit bright and we want to simulate that this car has been exposed to UV damage and also just the other elements of being in the North Woods, Wisconsin. So rain, humidity, cold temps, the whole lot. So one tip I want to share with you guys here is that after the wash is on, um, I scrub out with a fine Q-tip here the lettering. And that way it gets that green wash off the lettering. Our lettering remains nice and white. Next up here is we're going to add some streaks on the welding seams. And I'm just taking some Bragdon chalk and mixing it with 70% isopropyl alcohol and lightly putting that onto the seams. So it may not look like there's much there at this point in time, but there is a little bit of pigment there. We're going to repeat this process for the whole model. And we're going to build up our weathering layer by layer. It's really important that we don't want to gob too much on too fast. Otherwise, you may have a mistake that you'll have to redo. So we'll just go light, light passes and just work it into the model. We'll do all the seams here. And again, using the same technique of adding a lot of material and then taking it away with uh, a little alcohol wash. So we'll even do the ladders and all that good stuff there. And just like that, we have one side of the car weathered. With the base wash on the sides done, we're going to add a layer of roof rust to the nice shiny galvanized roof that we painted earlier. So here we're just using acrylic from the craft store. We're going to do dark burnt umber and 70% isopropyl alcohol. We're just going to do a little bit of a wash. It doesn't look like there's much paint on the model, but it's there. And then any excess, we're going to pull off to the edge of the model and simulate runoff. Runoff of the roof and how it's dripping down the sides of the, of the boxcar. Okay, so here we're after our second layer where we've added a few more coats. You can see the wash is starting to take hold. And then we've gone ahead and went with some full strength acrylics to really add the rust effect. And then finally what we did is we feathered in the acrylics with some Bragdon weathering powders. And this is the final result here. So you can see nice rusty roof to go along with our rusty sides. So we're going to pull some acrylics here in the palette together and we're going to start painting our trucks. So we got our truck side frame here. I apologize for the poor lighting. What we'll go ahead and do is take some dark burnt umber here. There we go, got the right one. And we're going to go ahead and add that full strength to the trucks. So oh, geez. KD has a split frame truck, so I guess we can't use the old barbecue skewer. I'm going to have to hold it by hand in the middle. So we'll go ahead and start adding that full strength and then come back in with a lighter burnt umber for the highlights. Get the whole model covered. We'll go ahead and dry it up and then we're going to add some powders here. And for highlight detail. So we're going to just use the regular rust color, get it on the bearing journals and into the springs to offset that dark umber. The wheels. So we've added that dark burnt umber as a base coat and we're just taking some Bragdon weathering powder here and we're going to put on some dark rust. Now it's quite a bit lighter than the paint on the wheels already. However, um, what we'll do is we'll get a good coat on there and then come back and 
take away some of the powder that we've added with a Q-tip. So as you can see here, the one side's done, and then we'll do the other side of the wheels. And you can see it's quite, almost looks orange, a little too orange. So what we'll do is we'll take that Q-tip, we'll come in and we'll just kind of rub it around and pull off some of the material that we went and put on. So this is a time well spent because you'll get the really nice dull effect and then we'll take a stippling brush just to just kind of blend it all in. Okay the car body sides or car ends are next. And we need to weather these up because they look brand new. We're going to do Bragdon powder 70% alcohol and I'm just using a micro brush to get the first layer on there. And then I'll take an alcohol wash and just kind of spread it around and just really make the end of the car look kind of grimy. So looks kind of awful going on, but if you just kind of feather it out and get it into the cracks and crevices in the molding, it looks pretty good. Here we're gonna accelerate the drying process. Now we're gonna come back in and add some mud marks here for the wheels from other cars blowing up mud and gunk onto the onto the end of the car. So again, just take the micro brush full of gunk, or in this case we had powder and, and alcohol, and we just kind of feather it out. We have a nice dirty end to our box car. Alright, now with some bad camera work, here we're going to go ahead and do some of the rusting of the brake details. Once we're done there, we're on to our final step, which is the pitting. And I take a micro brush with the Bragdon and alcohol mix. And to get that random pit effect, I just tap the end of the micro brush and leaves essentially speckles all over the side of the car. And this will be our base rust dots. So we'll go ahead and dry those off. And then I'll take full strength acrylic brown oxide paint. And I'll just put a little dot in the center of each of those quote unquote pits that we've added to the side of the car. So this process takes a little bit. So we'll go ahead and speed it up. So then we'll go ahead and take that alcohol wash and we're gonna drag from the top of the car straight to the bottom. And what this will do is simulate those pit marks streaking down the side of the car and get a really nice effect that these rusty marks are running down the side of the car. Here is the final result. So this video is the official reboot of my Mascoutin Valley Railroad. The next videos that I publish will be all around building my Proto Freelance Model Railroad, the Mascoutin Valley. As you can see, construction has already started on the bench work. So join me as we rebuild my dream model railroad. If you want to see more model railroad tutorials from me, be sure to click on that subscribe button in the middle of your screen. And if you want to watch another weathering tutorial, click the video in the upper right hand corner and I'll see you in the next video. Keep her in notch eight.